Hey guys, it's me, Kate again. So in this video I'll be talking about all my favorite books of 2020. These are in a no particular order. So uh, I don't go from my least favorite to my, uh, to my most favorite or uh, like uh, depending on months that I read, I mean they're just the list. Just because uh, ha, when I was read, adding them on the list, I was, for example, in January, this was my favorite, uh, these three were my favorite, so I wrote those three. In February, oh, these two were, so I wrote them down. So I do have a list uh, from the whole year. I have two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 12, um, um, 14, 16, 18, 20, 20, 22, 24, 20, 28, around 30 books. And I said I was just adding them, I didn't like review them. So, uh, I did not count uh, some just because I don't have bind up of the whole series and I'm, I'm not sure how many of those made it on the list. Apparently, appa apparently five out of seven so uh, I do have a list here and I also have one in my bullet journal. But that one is really hard to read uh, because I use uh, because as I was editing them, I ran out of space on the bottom of the page, so I uh, wrote like uh, in between. So you have like a couple of rows that are so tiny, uh, so tiny lettering that you cannot read what's on the page. So. We're starting with the one that uh, apparently I forgot to uh, add just because I, re I read it over. It literally took me a month. It's uh, Queen of Shadows by Sarah J. Maas. These books I need to read little ch chunks at a time. So the, this whole series, this fourth book in Throne of Glass series. So I need to read them little chunks at the time, around 10 to 20 pages, just because uh, if I, uh, I uh, can't. Uh, for example, first book, I read a page, uh, left it to, and I read that page took, uh, was for example in January and I read the rest of the book in November, something like that. Then the third book I started in November, read it next July. So uh, it does take me a long while just because I read a, chunk, uh, read a chunk and then just leave it somewhere. But because I read so little of it, uh, I do remember mostly what happened, so... Uh, in this series we are fo we're following Selena Sardotian who is uh, assassin and at the beginning of the first book she is taken uh, to the prince who asked her to be his champion to become king's assassin. Uh, and. Uh, the whole the whole storyline goes from there, and I do love all I like all books in the series that I read so far, but because they're so big, I just don't have motivation to read them. So it's like uh, uh, you're killing me. Uh, for the third book, I did have a good reason why I did not want to continue. Uh, I do, won't say what is it just because it spoils the second book, end of the second book. So then we have a manga. 
So we are first we have Takane and Hana by Yuki Shivasu, I think. Um, so this is about uh, this girl named Hana, whose sister is supposed to go to arrange the marriage meeting to this guy over here named Takane, but uh, she doesn't want to go. <coughs> so Hana is forced to uh, go instead of her, and Takane is uh, uh, this. Uh, heir to be uh, the large business business fortune, and then Hannah is like, um, <coughs> uh, taking him everywhere, and basically is, uh, I uh, explain. I think that the the one scene explains. Really um, accurately how their relation, their relationship is. Uh, they're going around town one day, and she is showing him like stuff she does with her friends and leaves him in the train and the leaves. So he stays in the train and <laughs> basically it's like that. He wants to do something with her and she finds a smarter way of doing it so yeah then we uh, the, uh, this is only volume one this is the only one I read so far also uh, you will have uh, wrap ups where I mention these books in the description al uh, along with reviews for some of these and then we have Made some of volumes one, two, three, and four. So this is one and wind up of first two volumes, and this is wind up of third and four volume. I'll just hold this one because it's easier than hold holding two books. Uh, uh, so you can see everything. It's better. Uh, and I, uh, so I, not sitting on the floor, but on a rug, so. Uh, in this one, uh, we're following uh, Misaki, who uh, goes into this school, which was up to a couple of years ago, all boys school, but now they are accepting girls. And basically, uh, she is uh, one of only a few girls, and basically, uh, she also works at the maid cafe. And we have Usui, I think that's his name, uh, who uh, one day comes to that maid cafe and she thinks he'll say to the rest of the school. And basically, uh, this series is so funny. So he, uh, Usui gets uh, punched, uh, yelled at, um, uh, and everything else multiple times just in these four volumes. And I don't know how he manages to stay. <laughs> And this is by Hiro Fujiwara. Uh, if you, uh, there is a reason why I always remember surname of the author, but not the name. Uh, actually, it's more sad than funny, considering uh, what the why I do know that. So, which pile? Let's go. With on this one. I do have two piles of books more, so... Then we have Sub uh, Spellslinger and Shadow Black by Sebastian de Castel. Uh, you'll probably see that a um, large part of these piles are random books in the series. For example, book 2, book 5 and stuff like that, so... Uh, in this 
Okay, now all these are first and second book in um, Spellslinger series. I'll again only hold up the first one considering I can't have both in one hand. So in this series we're following uh, Kellen who is a mage, a terrible one. And um, basically he's in this first one he's just about to get uh, to uh, have uh, his mage's trial but uh, he loses his magic and stuff goes from there basically uh, um, there is a, this guy over here it's a really funny squirrel cat. Uh, I'll read you the description of him from this second book. Uh, so, uh, it basically says, um, if, you're, if you've never seen a squirrel cat before, picture a mean-faced cat with a big bushy uh, tail and thin furry flops of skin between his front and back legs. Then let him uh, glide through that, let him glide through the air in a fashion that somehow looks both ridiculous and terrifying. Oh, and give him personality of a thief, a blackmail, uh, blackmailer, and if you believe Rage's story, a murder, a murderer on more than one occasion. <coughs> so basically, goes, uh, the guy Squirrel Cat said for himself that he's a murderer. Then we have a pinch of magic by Michelle Harrison. I want to do a full review for this, but uh, I read it this month and I do have uh, a lot of videos planned, so uh, that did not end up happening because I couldn't put it anywhere. Trust me, I said I do have every slot. Uh, so I do have three videos a week and I didn't know where to put this so uh, I really enjoyed it. This is about three sisters uh, uh, Betty, Phyllis and Charlie who are basically cursed to stay on this island their whole lives and, they, and if they go away, go away from the island, they'll die. And then uh, they go on the adventure to uh, to not be to get the, this girl's this girl curse removed. And basically. Uh, there is uh, an adventure, there are a few other characters which you may or may not see in the video that is coming in a month, less than a month, half a month yeah, it's 17th and I do need to do school work, but who cares uh, then we have Wishes by Wishwap the second book in the series was on my December TPI. I read it. It did not. Uh, uh, it wasn't five stars for me because of some reasons, but so it didn't get a chance to be in the studio. So, uh, Vicious is about Victor and Eli, who 10 years ago were college woman, roommates and best friends they are they are extraordinary which is in this world uh, people with superpowers basically uh, in the present day we're following uh, them 10 years after 
a college and now they're mortal enemies and basically you have two timelines one ten years ago where where you are finding out what happened and uh, why are they mortal enemies and present day time timeline which is which starts Uh, uh, which is counting down uh, two present moments so for example from week ago to what's happening now and basically <coughs> you're following the, these two timelines and finding out all about these characters and stuff like that I did really enjoy it, as I said, I did not enjoy second book as much, but this was great. Uh, also, December is still not done when I'm filming this, as you know, it's 17 when I'm posting this and also when I'm filming it. it. So, I do have one, uh, two books that I haven't finished on my TBR. One I'm currently reading. Uh, I don't think it will be five, uh, 5 out of 5 stars, it will be 4 at most, it's a little bit boring. The second one I haven't even started yet, so uh, I might do like I uh, update uh, when I finish that, uh, if that, that is favorite of the year. Uh, same uh, same way that I did last year because I watched Teen Wolf at just two days before end of the year or something so I just did an update so to, t to let you know that something has changed but then we have The Night Circus by Erin Morgan Cern. Uh <coughs> this is um, Standalone fantasy, I think, or magical. I think it's standalone fantasy. Uh, it's about this circus. This circus that is only uh, open at night, uh, so it opens at sunset, closes at dawn. So on. So now I remember the dusk till dawn. Okay, uh, the song by Zayn and Sia. Uh, so we are following these two magicians that are, are having a competition. Uh, I put it in quotation marks just because it's not... Uh, they do... The, uh, they know that they are competing against someone, but they don't know who or why. So they just and, and they don't know a lot of stuff and uh, because of that uh, you have uh, this what's going to happen uh, yeah, the plot is really s slow um, I heard that some people say nothing is happening it is but it's so slow and it's happening over a period of 10 or 20 I think it starts when the, one of the character is so it starts in February of, 9, of 1873 and ends in Paris January 19 03 so it spends period of 30 years so you have the story is uh, like really really slow and competition is uh, like not really competition it's more they are trying to outdo each other via, uh, via, ma via magic so it's um, the reason why I like this is, uh, I think, because the plot does pick up at some point. Uh, 
uh, a little bit. It really reminds me of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Season 1, where first 20 episodes, nothing major happens. Like, stuff happens, but not really the, the infrastructure, just, uh, for example, in, in this episode, there are here and then three episodes later, they are still in this place, basically. Not really, but you get the point, they're, the first half of the season is like bunch of things but nothing really major so it really reminds me of that if you haven't watched Yu-Gi-Oh! GX season 1 watch it skip season 3 and 2 and 3 go to the, straight to season 4 because one thing that I did not like of season 4 is not really addressing seasons 2 and 3 you do get some of the characters from those two seasons, but uh, like they're not talking about anything. So you have uh, basically direct continuation to season one. It's in season four, so it does get a little bit messy, but yeah. Uh, as I said, this really reminded me of Yu-Gi-Oh! Jack season 1, which is my favorite season of the whole Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. So it's like a really, really... It does take a while to get to the point. But when it gets there, it does make a lot of sense. I know that this was a really complicated explanation, but I'm sorry. Not really. Then we have a darker shade of magic by we shop. In this world there are four Londons who are following Kel who can travel in between these Londons. Uh, they, are, uh, they are like parallel dimensions and for example uh, and there are certain uh, so for example uh, Grey London is the one without magic Red London is where magic is revered. Uh, White London is where people uh, fight to control the remaining magic, and Black London is the one that was destroyed by magic. And one day, Kel, uh, Kel works for Crown, and one day he smuggles something from Black London, and that gets stolen. And stuff goes from there. Uh, it's really interesting. Um, uh, it does. Uh, I uh, I'll say this. I did not um, pay attention during the one part. Really, really like uh, good. So um, one. Why one thing get me out of nowhere, but then I remember that I didn't wasn't paying attention for like last twenty pages. So yeah, I did really enjoy this. The, uh, as you can see, if it's one of my favorite books of the year, then we have again three random books in the series. We, are ha we have a uh, Court of Mist and Fury, a Court of Wings and the Ruin, and a Court of Frost and Star Starlight by Sarah J. Maas. These are books 2, 3, and 3.5 in a Court of Thorns and Roses series. So in this series, we're following Feyre, who one day we were while hunting for meat for her family accidentally um, kills a fae and basically this fae's uh, boss comes and gets her to go to his court 
The first one is, uh, uh, I think, uh, Beauty and the Beast retelling, and this one is um, Hades and Persephone retelling, I think, or something like that. I think something like that. So they are, uh, they are really interesting. There is background plot to this which I'm not going to tell you because it spoils the first book a little bit the end of the first book so it's like bunch of stuff I did really enjoy the, all, th all three of them then we have uh, The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty uh, this is the only uh, if you see the first book in the series, that means that I either I did not continue on, as in some of these cases, or I didn't finish the series, but I did continue on with it. I'll mention when I, where, in which case I didn't uh, continue on with the series. So, in the, this book we are following uh, Nari, who is a Kona woman, um, I think it's Nari, that, I think it's how you pronounce her name, and uh, she lives in the 18th century Cairo, and uh, basically she has this power that she can sense what's wrong with people, so they have sickness, and basically uh, one day she is performing one of her coins and Cons and accidentally summons a Jin warrior who brings her to uh, Devabad, uh, which is this uh, city uh, in middle of nowhere. Basically, they're like traveling couple of weeks through deserts to get to there. So it's basically in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and in Devabad we're following other perspective which is uh, Eli? I think Ali, Ali, Eli is in the other book and he is one of the princes in this in this city basically uh, I did only have uh, one Problem. Uh, there's a lot of descriptions of a desert, so we have like mentions of sand a lot of times, uh, which really annoyed me. I did have A in geography all, uh, all throughout 5th, 6th and 7th grade and also last year uh, in the freshman year of high school and in 8th grade I did have a B. In the geography, but considering how high my marks were, I know how the desert looks like. I don't need to know that there's kilometers of sand, for example. I know how the desert looks like. If somebody doesn't, uh, something is serious, 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 seriously wrong with you. My dad's back. So I got to here. Uh, Harry Potter and God of the Fire and War of the Phoenix um, is about Harry Potter, who is a wizard. And I don't know what the hell is happening in these two. He. No, bro. Uh, then I have... These are Mongray. The Gemini and Obsidio, the second and third book in the Illumina Files series. So... Uh, in this one, uh, we are following Hannah and Nick who are on this spaceship when the, where um, space station where 
characters from the first one are supposed to come. And um, stuff goes down. I'm sorry, my dad's back. Uh, this wouldn't be PG if he wasn't. And in this one, um, we are from characters on the colony where the first one is set. Uh, so in the first one, this colony gets attacked and some characters flee, but some people stay behind. And uh, we are following a few of those people. I need to rush through these. I do have a test in less than half an hour, so... Uh, again, wrong way around. We have... Wonder Woman of War, Brinker by Leigh Bardugo. Oh, these are by Amy Kaufman and G. Christoph. And, and there we have uh, Superman Dawnbreaker by Matt de la Pena. Again, I'll go a little bit here. Uh, these are first and fourth book in DC Icon series. Uh, which are... Uh, basically origin stories of DC characters. First one is Wonder Woman, second one is Batman, third one is Catwoman, and the four, fourth one is Superman. Uh, then we have Gentleman's Guide to Whites and Virtue, White and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. In this book we are following Monty who is English aristocrat, uh, but uh, he is uh, he doesn't want to inherit his fa father's estate. Uh, in this one, he is uh, he goes with his brother on uh, no, not his brother. His brother is a baby in this one. In this one, he goes to tour of Europe with his best friend and his sister tags along. Uh, uh, the tour lines of these books are so crazy. Uh, everything that can go wrong, goes wrong. And basically they're, they go, uh, go from England, end up in Santorini in the Greece, don't ask. Uh, my uh, copy is a little bit water damaged and sun damaged. Uh, I, I read this on a beach. So, yeah, it's a little bit wet. Not still, but it was wet, so it's water damaged and stuff. <laughs> but. I did enjoy it. I did continue on with the series. Um, second book I did not like as much and third book is coming out next week. Uh, next year, year I think following, following Gnome which is the little brother whom Monty calls Gnome. I'm not sure what his actual name is. Uh, then we have uh, The Bear and the Nightingale. The Girl in the Tower and The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden. These are... Um, all three books in Winter Nights trilogy. Uh, they're, they're following the Vasya who is... For, in the first one, this little girl who can see... Uh, Russian home spirits. Um, and basically uh, is... Um, uh, com uh, talking to them and stuff and he, her father remarries because her mother died at childbirth and basically her father remarries uh, to a woman who also see these creatures but she thinks they're demons and so she brings priests with her Priest is not job. Then we have Chronicles of Narnia by C.N. Lewis. More specifically, 
The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, Prince Caspian, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, The Sailor Chair, and The Last Battle. Uh, the, li the Lion, the Witch and the War Wardrobe, Prince Caspian and the Voyage of Dawn Treader uh, are following um, Penrince siblings in during their voyages to Narnia. Silver Chair is following their cousin Eustace and Last Battle is Last Battle uh, uh, I only remember that it starts with an ape and a don donkey <laughs> Basically, again, uh, Narnia is this basically a different planet I'm still not sure what the hell it is, but it's fun. I also watched the three movies. The third one is my favorite, The Voyage of Don Shredder. Then we have Ramayana by R. R. K. Narayan. This is a short and modern prose version of an Indian epic. Uh, we did read the next uh, uh, part of it in the freshman year of high school because uh, we are going through class and we are, did read part of it and then I, now I read this whole thing it's really really short it's not even 200 pages long uh, it's really fun um, definitely I liked it more than I thought I would And then, uh, also, I did not say what this is about. This is about Rama, who is this, basically, he was Indian king in this epic. I'm not sure if he's the real person, but when you come to epic stories, it's usually a made-up person. <laughs> so, uh, but he was exiled and stuff grows from there. Then we have We Hunt the Flame by Hafsak uh, Faisal. I mentioned this book a lot recently. I still don't know how to pronounce out of our author's name. Uh, so this is about um, a girl named Zafira who is the hunter. Uh, basically everybody thinks she's a guy so that's why they call her the hunter because they're not, they don't know she's a girl and also uh, found the prince Nasir who everybody, call, everybody calls prince of death, death uh, considering how many people he killed and they go to this island and stuff goes from there and island is uh, behind this magic forest which magically grows bigger and bigger day by day and crazy things and last two books that I have as I said I do have test in few minutes 15 minutes so I needed to rush through these as fast as for possible we have um, Glass Sword and King's Cage by uh, uh, Victoria Aveyard, which are about a girl na named Mar um, Mayor, I think it's Mayor, who finds out that she's a red. Uh, the Reds are not supposed to have powers, but she does, and basically she's brought into the world, world of silver, which are people with powers. Uh, and uh, shit goes down basically. Uh, these are third, the second and third book. There is the fourth one, I still haven't read it. Yeah, I did read the Croatian editions, I think there's no translation in Croatian of first book. I know that this sound last part sounds weird. Yeah, uh, that's it for this video. 
down below you have my social media, my email and some things from for feedback if you want to check those out and uh, that's it for this video and if you liked it, uh, like, share and subscribe and I'll see, I'll see you in the next one.